Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the licensing committee of Thursday, the 12th of October. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, we'll go straight into the agenda. Um, apologies for absence I've received from Councillor Andrew Cooper and Councillor Dan Maycock. Any more apologies that anybody's aware of? I think Councillor Jay was intending to be here. I don't, I've had uh, a message off Councillor Jay that's saying that he, he may be a little bit late, so thank you for that. Um, okay, I've got uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Um, I've actually got two sets of minutes, uh, so minutes from the 22nd of August, which was the, um, let me get the right minutes, which was the meeting for the taxi license holder. Uh, and then we've got meet, uh, mi minutes of the meeting on the 11th of September, which was the street trading policy meeting. Um, <coughs> is it your wish that I sign those as a true record? Can I get moved move by Councillor mm -hmm. Clements? Seconded by Councillor Thurgood. All those in favour? That's carried. I'll just sign them. Uh, agenda item number three is declarations of interest. Do we have any? There are none. So that brings us to agenda item number four, which is an update on the penalty points awarded to the licensed drivers. Um, and it's a verbal update from me, apparently. Um, <laughs> before I uh, invite Sarah to just give an update on that for me, um, <clears throat> I would just like to um, thank um, Councillor Kingston for stepping in at the last couple of meetings for me, um, and thank committee for um, for your work during the two meetings that I've not been here. Um, I've been very lucky in the past um, to have very capable uh, vice chairs um, and uh, very lucky this time as well to have Councillor Kingston to be able to step in, so thank you for that. Um, I've asked Sarah to give an update on the penalty points um, that have been awarded recently. So for those that aren't aware, I think it was uh, about five years ago, we brought in the penalty point scheme for drivers which only really went into effect in the past 12 to 18 months. Um, so that's that's now out and working. Um, so Sarah's just going to give us a bit of an update on that because um, we've had some points awarded recently. So uh, I'll leave it to you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, we updated the list of penalty points when we um, revised the taxi policy that came into effect in April of this year to bring all the points in line with the new conditions. Um, and the new requirements in the policy. So since April, we've issued 48 points, um, which covered eight breaches of conditions to 11 separate drivers. Um, and out of those drivers, they were also, also issued two fixed penalty notices because they were referred to smoking in the vehicles. Um, the breaches of conditions covered non-display of the plate, smoking in the vehicle, leaving a vehicle unattended, a bald tyre, failure to notify us of points awarded on their DVLA driving licence, unacceptable behaviour, failure to report an accident within 72 hours and failure to declare on an application form um, any convictions um, that, they, that they'd had. Um, so yeah, so, so we're really pleased in that we are now awarding the points. They are recorded. They'll stay on the driver's records um, for three years, a rolling three years. Um, no driver has been awarded points again at a later date. The only one driver that we had that's been awarded two lots of points was observed at the same time. Um, so yeah, so that's... That's the update. Thank you, Sarah. I think it's just worth noting for committee, while that sounds like that's a lot of points, the, the whole idea behind the scheme was to stop drivers coming in front of committee for really small offences, um, which, which some of them are whilst we don't particularly want drivers doing that. The hope is that with the point system, um, that after... Uh, after the first time, hopefully they they won't do that again. Um, but but there is triggers in there for them to get a couple of warnings before it would actually come back to before it would actually come in front of the committee. Um, and now that it's logged, we you, you can see trends of repeat offenders as well. So the officers are able to to then um, speak to drivers and, and put things in place which we never had before. Um, we had drivers that officers would talk to on the rank, and then a couple <coughs> of weeks later they talked to on the rank and 
they, they talked to them about 10 times before anything was was actually done so the triggers are all in place now for that and, and i think it's really good really good to see that that's actually working um i will take some comments and questions i know seeing uh, councillor clements had a hand up yeah thank you chair i know that myself and you were on the committee when we brought in the points system and obviously if you said at the start of the meeting it didn't really get underway I think um, it's very much our baby this was yeah it um, was wasn't it really yeah. and we felt a little bit guilty afterwards but not to, for too long so it's really good that um, Wendy and Sarah have, have run with this because we accept us we expect a standard of our drivers and you know I use the 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 adage that you know we had a customer that was came to the train station and was picked up by somebody in a string vest shorts and flip-flops that's not the image that we want to give Tamworth so I'm really pleased that that this is this appears to be working um, but do you feel that the message is getting across to our drivers because obviously we've had drivers that have gone from COVID, through COVID and not come back and we've got new drivers so what's the word on the street really do you feel that the message is getting across and people that they feel that it's a good thing we do I mean we, we like to educate first so we don't go straight in there and um, award the points um, should we see anything we do like to educate first and then should we see anything again with the same driver we then go on to award the points but yeah word soon gets around within the taxi trade um, that, that this is starting to happen now um, and that we we want to raise standards and this is the whole point behind the penalty point scheme um, we had a meeting with the new chairman of the Hackney Carriage Association um, last week or the week before um, and they're positive um, about it and and yeah they're, they're fully supportive um, yeah we be shortly it, it's with um, comms at the minute for formatting but we'll be shortly releasing a newsletter um, which we'll do on a regular basis for the trade, um, which will be emailed out. And I can certainly include members of the committee so you're aware of messages that are again, getting sent out to them. But the idea of the newsletter is to, to educate um, any particular issues that we have um, at, at that particular time will be put in the newsletter. Um, but in the meantime, if we do get any think urgent that we also want to convey to the trade we will convey those messages those messages out but we feel the relationship that we've got with the trade is less of a them and us and more that we we're all want to work together thank you sarah yeah i think that, that would be really helpful if um, members of the committee could get a copy of that newsletter as well and be included on the mailing list I know from um, the meetings that, that we have that um, officers do a lot of work with the um, the trade now um, and it is very much more of a, a working together as opposed to what it's been in the past. So I think it's really good news and really positive um, through us as, a, as an authority and, and well done to, to you guys for the work that you do on that. Dina, do you want to just come back in? Yeah, I just wanted to come back in. Obviously, from the licensing committee that we had with the, one of the drivers in here, um, a lot of the solicitor's evidence was based around non-communication on our behalf. As when I want to say that, I mean TBC's behalf. Have we learned from that and have we, you know, I know what the answer's going to be to this because I know both of you. Um, but have we learned from what he said that, you know, if some evidence comes into us, that we respond to that evidence, even if it's a holding email or a holding letter to say thank you for... Da, 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 um, because he based the whole of his evidence on lack of communication from us. Um, so I really want to see that improved. I know it will be improved, but just wanted to bring that up. Um, yeah, we certainly learned a lot of lessons from that, that hearing um, and procedures have now been put into place where everything gets logged. Um, we'll be shortly going on to a new computer system, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, which will make it even easier for information to be recorded. Um, the points that have been issued um, have been put in a formal letter um, that has been emailed and also a hard letter copy has been, has been posted. 
um, outlining the reasons why and the process for appeal against the points. Um, so yes, following that, we've certainly looked at our, our procedures. Anybody else got any comments? Councillor Maker. Cheers, Chair. Um, <coughs> if somebody gets, uh, is it three sets of points and then a bang? Is it? For, in relation to the penalty point system, if they have 12 points in a three-year period, they'll appear before committee. If they then get a ban from us, what stops them going to uh, another licenser and then actually working in Tamworth? If the committee decide to suspend the driver's badge for a period of one month, then they obviously can't work for that one month. But that's just in terms of our licence though, isn't it? With neighbouring authorities, yeah. yeah. When um, a driver applies to an, a neighbouring authority for a badge, they have to declare on the application form if they've held or hold a badge with a neighbouring authority. Um, regardless of what they put in, in that section, we always um, ask the other authorities. We've, we've got a pro forma form that we email to them for them to email back. Um, we do that as a matter of course with the immediate local authorities. But if they've declared anybody other on the application form, we also ask that local authority. There's also an NR3 register um, that re we are required to use and check. And when we revoke or um, refuse a licence, it has to be recorded on this register. Um, and it's... it's um, central government now that have instructed local authorities that they must use this register. Okay, thank you for that update, Sarah. Um, moving on to agenda item number five, so we've got the scrap metal policy. So this is coming back to committee following um, us sending this out for to consultation. Um, Sarah, before the start of the meeting, has handed out some uh, an updated <coughs> voluntary code of practice um, which is included within that policy and that's following feedback from the consultation um, so I will hand over to Sarah just to introduce this and let us know what's been updated and then we'll take questions comments um, before we move on thank you thank you Members may recall that on the 22nd of June, the draft scrap metal policy was brought before this committee. At that committee, members resolved that the draft scrap metal policy be referred to Cabinet for them to approve the draft policy for public consultation. Consultation on the draft policy was held between the 31st of July and the 24th of September. Details of who were consulted are contained in Appendix 3. Responses were received and detailed at Appendix 4. One response referred to the addition of wording in relation to the requirement for a waste carrier's registration. The other two responses referred to a couple of additions of wording to the policy and also the proposed code of conduct. Officers took on board the comments received and would like to propose that the code of conduct is voluntary and amendments have been made in anticipation that members agree and circulated. Tamworth Borough Council have three professionally run sites by large operators and it is considered that the Code of Conduct would act as a guidance to new applicants to what Tamworth Borough Council would expect from them. The recommendation before the committee today is that members recommend to Cabinet that they consider the draft scrap metal policy as suitable for adoption, subject to the amendments proposed. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Um, so I'll take questions or comments. Um, obviously, it's a policy that we've looked at before, um, and it's been out for consultation. So, um, yeah, any questions or comments from anybody on this? Councillor Clements. I think this is brilliant. Voluntary code of practice for scrap metal dealers. It's, I think it, it, you'll have more people sign up than you think because it's voluntary. If you start mandating everything, people just get a little bit aerated and think, 
like in the report is well you've got to do this you've got to do that and some of the wording perhaps could be changed so i welcome this i think it's great that the they have been given the opportunity to sign up or not so i think it's a a good piece of work thank you councillor clements anybody else councillor thurgood um obviously this, um we know the authorised collectors because they pay the license fee, um, which I think lasts for three years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it seems a, quite a small amount for authorisation for three years, but how about the, the guys that actually rock up in a, a truck or a van and start going through skips um, on people's drives? How do we actually, I don't know, um, license people like that, or, or is it just accepted that those people are, are out there and they'll do this. If they're collecting scrap, it falls under the scrap metal policy. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got any concerns, one amendment that we will be making to the application forms is recording registration numbers for vehicles that will be used by collectors. Okay. So if you do have any concerns about vehicles, then drop us an email and we can look into that for you. Yeah. Um, anybody not collecting scrap, falls outside of this policy, um, but I'm not sure it's actually legal to go skip diving. <laughs> yeah. It's probably not, but a lot of people seem to do it. Okay, uh, anybody else? No? Okay. The recommendation um, is um, that we recommend this to Cabinet, um, that they consider the draft scrap metal policy 2024-2028 as suitable for adoption subject to any amendments made following comments received tonight. Um, I don't think there are any amendments. Um, so can I get a mover and a second for that? Moved by Councillor Ward, seconded by Councillor Clements. All those in favour? That is unanimous and those moved. Thank you, everybody. Uh, so, Councillor... Are you noting this or do you want me to write it? You are noting it. Okay, all right. Thank you for that one. Um, so, um, moving on to agenda item number six, um, which is the draft charitable collections policy 2024 2028. If memory serves, this one has been in front of committee as well um, and has been out for consultation. Um, and again, um, this is coming back following uh, the consultation period. So, I'll hand over to Sarah again for this one. Thank you. Members may recall that on the 22nd of June, the draft charitable collections policy was brought before this committee. At that committee, members resolved that the draft charitable collections policy be consulted upon and brought back to this committee, subject to the amendments as referred to in the report. Consultation on the draft policy was between the 3rd of July and the 24th of September. Details of who was consulted on are contained in Appendix 3. There were a couple of responses received, but these were just for clarification on the proposals. And a response was, was received from Australia, which I think I took the instruction to consult far and wide a bit too literally. <laughs> the recommendation before the committee today is that members recommend to full council that they consider the draft charitable collections policy <laughs> as suitable for adoption to become effective the 1st of January 2024. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, can I can I just ask, is that um, uh, that council the, the response to the consultation from Tamworth in Australia? Is that going to be in the report that goes to council? Um, I can certainly include it if you wish it. Take yeah, well, I mean, I mean, why not? Let's do it. Um, <laughs> what, what I will say, just on the on the fact that we, we we've had responses um, to I think all of these policies, it's good to see that we're actually getting engagement because I know in the past we've not really had engagement from the public. So it is good to see that we're getting engagement from the public, from stakeholders. Um, so it, it does help us make sure that we're the policies that we're, we're putting out there are, are robust and, and are right and fit for purpose. So I think that's really good to see. Um, any questions or comments from anybody on this one? Uh, Councillor Maycock? Were they actually from Tamworth, Australia? Brilliant. Excuse me. A very small point. Um, on page 77, I think it is, um, section 6, paragraph 3, it refers to Her Majesty's Stationery Office. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yes, well, thank you. I'll also <laughs> I'll check the remainder of the document as well and make sure okay. that um, any references. I mean, it's interesting have been as well. All Royal Mail vans uh, have got PR still on the uh, sides. But... I think um, <laughs> I think it's great that this has been before us once and been out of consultation, <laughs> and we're only just picking that up. But uh, th yeah, thanks for catching that, Peter. Um, we'll get that updated. Has anybody else got anything um, on this one? Again, um, the recommendation is that we, this one will be recommended to full council uh, and that full council consider the draft uh, policy um, as suitable for adoption. Um, can I get a mover and a seconder for that? Moved by Councillor Clement, seconded by Councillor Maycock. All those in favour? That is unanimous and carried. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, so moving on to the final item of the evening, it's uh, agenda item number seven. This is the sexual establishment policy 2024 to 2028. <laughs> Um, again, this one has been in front of the committee already and has been out to consultation and is now coming back in front of us uh, for us to recommend this back to full council. So I'll hand over to Sarah to introduce this report. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Members may recall that on the 22nd of June, the draft sexual establishment policy was brought before this committee. At that committee, members resolved that the draft policy be consulted upon and brought back to this committee to consider any responses received. Consultation on the draft policy was between the 3rd of July and the 24th of September. Details of who were consulted are contained in Appendix 3. Attached to Appendix 4 is the response received from Staffordshire Police asking for additions to the policy and additions to the set, set of standard conditions. I also wanted to clarify a point in that response in that on page 12 of the draft policy at point 9.4, the second appeal refers to the judicial review process and this will be reworded accordingly to make it clear. The recommendation before the committee today is that members recommend to full council that they consider the draft sexual establishment policy as suitable for adoption to become effective the 1st of January 2024, subject to the amendments suggested by Staffordshire Police, should members feel these are appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments on this one? <coughs> no? Okay. Uh, in that case, um, the recommendation is that we recommend this to full council um, and uh, to consider the policy as suitable for adoption, subject to the, any amendments following the comments received by the police. Um, again, there are none. Um, so can I get a move and a seconder for that? Uh, moved by Councillor Coates, seconded by Councillor Wood. All those in favour? That is unanimous and carried. Um, that brings us to the end of our agenda this evening. So thank you, everybody, for their attendance. Can I just make a comment, Chair, just that those four pieces of work are tremendous pieces of work. And I think um, that the team and the officers should be commended because it's thorough, it's simple to read, and it's what we need from licensing officers. Um, and dare I say, it, it's been a, li a little bit lacklustre before now. So thank you for your work. Thank you for the effort that you've put in. I've been on licensing for 13 years and I can now start to see changes happening. So thank you. Yeah, I think I, I, think I, I concur with, um, with Council Clemens and I, I think I've said to you guys before, um, you've been a breath of fresh air since you've come in. Um, and, it, and it is really good to see. Um, it, it's good to see that we're getting, like I say, engagement from the public, from uh, the businesses, but also we're getting engagement during the meetings um, so uh, I remember when we looked at some of these policies there were a lot of questions um, and a lot of engagement from members as well which we've not again not particularly had in the past um, so it, it's good to see that it's been looked at from all angles um, and I know these get scrutinized quite a lot as well um, so for, for anybody that, that, that does watch this you know it, it, that that's the confidence that, that these policies that we're putting out there are scrutinized they're robust and they are fit for purpose um so yeah really good to see you thank you for that comment tina if we can minute that please thank you very much um that brings us to the end of the meeting so uh, thank you all have a good evening and a safe journey home